This video clip will cover some background information about grow lights. One of the biggest advantages to indoor gardening is the regulation of plant growth through the use of artificial sunlight. Not only can you control your plant's development, but you will see much faster growth as there are no cloudy days indoors. The most commonly used grow lights are fluorescence, metal halide, and high pressure sodium. Each has its advantages that I will briefly cover. All three light bulb types require a light ballast, which is a transformer that converts your household power into a usable form for the light. Both metal halide and high pressure sodium lights are high intensity discharge, which means the light they produce has a good ability to penetrate plant leaves. Fluorescent light can grow plants indoors, but produces much smaller plants and are generally considered to be far inferior to both metal halide and high pressure sodium lights. The only advantage of fluorescence is that they produce less heat and are good for clones. When you are ready to start flowering, you will switch from your metal halide to your high pressure sodium bulb. You will then use your light timer to switch the light cycle from 24 hours of constant light to 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness, which tells your plants that days are shorter, the spectrum of light is changing, and it's time to flower before it becomes winter. We recommend you start the flowering stage, which is when you start the 12 hours of darkness, once your plant is one-third the size you want it to be as an adult. This forced flowering causes hormonal changes that allows the plant to be fully developed at, say, 15 inches tall, rather than normally growing 3 to 4 feet tall. It is a common myth that plants can't utilize more than 12 hours of light per day and require a dark period. Try to imagine a plant's growth cycle is similar to that of an animal. The more you feed it, the fatter and bigger it gets. If you never decided to switch to 12 hours of darkness, your plants would continue to grow until they reached an unmanageable size. Often, people recommend a 18 hour of light and 6 hour of darkness cycle, although we found that this results in slower results not only in growth, but in the time it takes to begin flowering once you cut back to 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. A good way to test the distance from your light reflector to your plants is by using the warmth test. This consists of putting your hand near the light reflector and seeing when it becomes uncomfortably warm, at which point you will move your light reflector slightly above that point. With our turnkey systems, the reflector should be cool to the touch due to the large cooling fans. This allows you to bring your reflector very close to adult plants. Note, however, that seedlings often can't handle the light being closer than 12 inches due to stress from the lighting system not the heat. The reflector is fully adjustable so move it up slowly to the top of the box as your plants continue to grow taller until you're finished with your plant cycle. Many customers ask why not use a larger lighting system and the answer is simple. It is unnecessary. When it comes to grow lights, the farther the light source is from your plants, the slower they will grow. You will get more out of a 400 watt light than a 600 to 1000 watt system since the 400 watt light can be 2 inches from your plant growing tips instead of 10 to 15 inches with a 600 to 1000 watt bulb. To change your light bulb, simply attach the reflective ducting where it connects to your reflector with adhesive tape. Reach in and unscrew the bulb. Note that the tape is on the ducting only for shipping purposes and it should be a tight friction fit regardless. All high pressure sodium and metal halide lamps take a few minutes to warm up so your light will not come on to full brightness for as long as 20 minutes. If power is interrupted to the unit while operating, it will take up to 15 minutes for the lamp to cool down before it can operate again. If your bulb does not seem to be fully powering up, put a small amount of Vaseline on the base and try screwing it into the socket as tight as possible. Small pieces of glass or metal are commonly found inside the bulb. This is normal. Use only the matching wattage lamp to the ballast unit. For example, you should not use a 400 watt lamp with a 250 watt ballast or another combination. Metal halide units should be turned off once every two to four weeks for a minimum of 15 minutes to give it a quick rest. Failure to do so will result in a loss of bulb life. HPS and metal halide bulbs should be replaced every 18 months of typical use. 